All right. Um, I took some wrote wrote down my measurements here as I as I always do. Uh, I didn't mention that this is the yeah maybe I did just for the one for my shop. Um, it just reached the, reached the heat set point and shut off. Um, got it uh, charged up uh, by the manufacturer's specs. Um, the pressures didn't quite come around. Uh, the discharge or the suction stayed a little low and the uh, discharge stayed a little high but I have a feeling that happens. You know, The specs they give you are for new units and these are 26 years old so whatever uh, wear and tears uh, that has occurred on the unit has caused those to not be perfect but uh, the amp draws the <coughs> excuse me the amp draw <coughs> looked right I got a uh, enough superheat and uh, plenty of sub cooling and it called for 15 um, you know 15 and a half full load amps I got measured 15.4 so it seems like we're pretty on port on point with that uh, and that was all in the heating cycle and uh, we built ourselves up a little heat load in this room now so I'll go kick the thermostat over to cool and uh, see what happens Yeah, nice toasting here. Okay, that there's that to cool. Oh, and I gotta switch to auto, of course. Alright. Yep. Into this this pocket. Alright. Pulling into cooling now, and our uh, pressure is uh, yeah, it's definitely in cooling. Pressures didn't change a whole lot. Uh, discharge dropped a little bit, down to around. Uh, let it stabilize a little more before we call it, but. Uh, 235 between 235 and 240 right now and the suction came up to 70 and uh, we look over here see what the cooling cycle calls for um, cooling cycle calls for what seven degree condenser water uh, 70 on the discharge and one se or one se or seventy suction pressure and one seventy seven discharge. So suction's on on point. Um, discharge is a little high compared to that, but certainly within a reasonable range. And they call for twenty one degrees of superheat. So uh, we'll take. I uh, don't don't think I need to check the amp draw again. Um, couldn't hurt, I suppose. But there we go. I was pulling a, a few more amps and cooling. I don't know what that means, but not uh, not alarming. Take a curtain cut off of there. Start getting some temperature readings. Thermocouple back up here. There we go. Grab a suction line temperature. Right there. Ought to be pretty good. Let's see what she drops to. Alright, and uh, at 70, we calculated that saturation temperature to be. Uh, 70. Where am I? 
Enter, enter, enter. My PT chart here. For 70, we're going to call it maybe 41 degrees. It says 42 for 70. Yeah, 41 degrees saturation. And we got probably going to hold around there somewhere. Uh, 57. So if we got 42 and 57, that means we got uh, 15 degrees of superheat, which is not quite 21, but again, quite enough. Uh, quite close enough for what we're doing here. Uh, again, the amps look normal, so um, that's good. Go ahead and grab quick uh, liquid line temperature here. There's a sub -blue. Oh, it's much less, less relevant on these units because we're uh, uh, fix restricted cap feeds instead of uh, instead of a uh, TXV, of course. And we want to measure the condenser outlet with the line right there. And with the 230, it looks like now, 230 dis, uh, discharge pressure. Wish we can call the 230. So we'll call it 111 saturation temperature. So 111 to, oh, I think that's going to get up to 87, 111, still climbing? Yeah, that'll get to 87, I think. So 87 to 111 would be, this is 18. Got about uh, 24 degrees of subcooling, so that's good. And uh, you know, I think that's going to do it for this one. Um, the only other possible, I have the pressure switch jumper out still, so I may have to replace that little pressure switch. It was acting funny, but if that checks out, then uh, we're going to call it a day on this one. And uh, there's another. Another fun day on the job. See you later.